Hello everyone, thank you for today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days, for today's second video. Uh, that's going to take us to around the 8th of May, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles running to around a couple of weeks. We're going to look at the Beijing Climate Centre today for the next 40 days, because we can't show you the CFSB2 uh, weekly, so I haven't updated um, today, so I'm not sure what's happened there. Sometimes that does happen. It can go on a day or two, actually. So uh, hopefully that won't, be, that won't be the case this time. But it, it has happened in the past that uh, sometimes they don't uh, update the CFS weeklies uh, for a little while. So um, anyway, we have Beijing Climate Centre instead of CFS at the end of the video. Uh, now, before I do anything, I'll just say about the ECM Death 30 day uh, look ahead has been released. So, that's looking at temperature and precipitation anomalies the next four weeks for uh, the UK and the rest of Europe as well. So, uh, that's been released. Very changeable sort of four weeks coming up, especially in the north and the west of Europe. Some of these areas do look drier and hotter for you, uh, much of the period. Tonight, we're going to have a look at the bank holiday uh, weekend. Uh, well, bank holiday Friday, but it does, I suppose, extend out through the weekend. That's coming up on the 8th of May. It was supposed to be for the 75th anniversary of uh, the E Day. I suppose it is still, really, but all of the commemorations and whatnot for that um, anniversary, 75th anniversary of uh, the E Day, have all been uh, put on the back burner due to this awful coronavirus. Uh, so, we've still got bank holiday, though. So, um, I'll I'll uh, bring you up to date with the weather uh, potential for that anyway uh, in today's third and final video update that will be coming up tonight. Before I do anything else, I'll just say a big thank you to our latest uh, YouTube channel member. So, uh, YouTube channel member number 11 actually is Anders Feigenson. Not sure if I pronounced that right, but Anders, I think it's Fingenson or Fingenson, has become our 11th YouTube uh, channel member. So thank you so much, Anders, uh, for doing that. If you would like to become a channel member for Gaz, what we need to do is come to the Gaz uh YouTube homepage and then click the join button uh, on the homepage or with all of the videos and uh, that takes you to another page where you can see uh, the benefits that you're going to get for becoming a YouTube channel member and you can also uh, sign up your membership and uh, that's absolutely great thanks for doing that if you can't see the join button then there is a link in the description uh, for uh, for mobile and tablet devices, and there's also a link on uh, Gazwebby's homepage at gazwebby.com. So it's relatively easy to get to uh, the join page, and then you can see what benefits you'll get for becoming a Gazwebby's YouTube channel member. And you can also sign up if you would like to do that. Four pounds five nine a month, and you will get uh, some benefits and perks. So a big thank to all of our. Uh, YouTube channel members. We've done this, I think, around a couple of weeks now since we started this, just under a couple of weeks. We've got 11 channel members, so a big thank you to our uh, our 11 uh, channel members uh, so far. Special thank you, of course, to latest channel member, uh, Anders Feigenson. Thank you so much, Anders, uh, for doing that. Right, so these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The uh, red line is a 30 year upper air temperature average. And we're looking at Edinburgh. Looking at Edinburgh today. So it's a bit colder than average at the moment, actually. Weather well, has turned rather chilly, I have to say. And uh, where I am in North France, it's been raining for more. Not particularly heavy rain, but it's been quite persistent. And uh, some areas, I think, have had some quite heavy rain uh, this morning. So, yes, pretty damp and uh, temperatures taking the tumble as well. We're going to see these colder temperatures continuing, or cooler than average temperatures anyway, continuing for the next few days also. Uh, as going to the early part of next week, we may well get a push-up in the temperature. But if we do, it could be associated with low pressure bringing showers along as well as rain, possibly even turning a little bit thundering uh, if those uh, temperatures push up high enough. And then as we go further on through the rest of the first week of May and into the second week of May, we just see a lot of scattered. We've got our warmer ensemble members up here. We've got our colder ensemble members down there. So quite a lot of scatter. Um, overall, though, looking pretty mixed, I have to say, uh, and we said in terms of precipitation. So uh, this raining road, remember, it's already wetter down in the south. Over the next few days, it will be southern areas, interestingly, England and Wales, get the wettest weather. Scotland and Northern Ireland will actually be a bit dry. But gradually as we go along, even further north, we do see uh, rain um, becoming more widespread and heavier. So by the early part of next week, looking very wet in Edinburgh, as it will be, I would have thought, across many parts 
of the country and then generally quite changeable even into the second week of May. So this is what I've been talking about in the videos of course, it does look as though May is going to be significantly more changeable. Uh, probably significantly more unsettled and also somewhat cooler compared to the warm, dry April that we've been uh, experiencing. Temperature anomalies on the 28th of April to the 6th of May are going to be below average. It's a cold and average week coming up. Precipitation anomalies from the 28th of April to 6th of May are wetter than average, particularly so for Ireland, England and Wales, less so for Scotland, particularly northern and western parts of Scotland. However, overall, it does look quite unsettled and it looks pretty cool as well in the week ahead. So that's how the GFS is looking for Friday. We're dominated by low pressure on Friday. Central pressure is somewhere around 1,000 to 990 millibars. So yes, we're dominated by low pressure. And we're going to keep these unsettled conditions going through the weekend as well. This is Sunday, just generating a little bit of a ridge on Sunday. And possibly start to pull winds into the south. Look, we've got some southerly winds beginning to appear there for Monday the 4th of May. This idea has been appearing quite often in the GFS ensembles. We might pull up some, uh, not GFS operation ones as well, we might pull up some warmth from the south. But with all of this low pressure out to our west, southwest, it's likely very unstable. And this is Tuesday the 5th of May, a week today. And then we've got low pressure being generated by that warming up of the atmosphere. So it just implies that if it does warm up early next week, it'll be very temporary and uh, it's likely to generate heavy rain, possibly thunder. Uh, beyond that, through to the middle of next week, a little bit more of a ridge of high pressure then starting to appear as we head towards day 10. So second half of next week turns drier and the high pressure begins to inch its way up towards Greenland and Iceland. So it starts to set up a northern blocking feature there as we go into the second week of May. I'm not sure about this. The GFS could have gone off on a little bit of a tangent by this point. But it is um, setting up like northern blocking over Greenland there by the time you get through to uh, Sunday the 10th of May. And as often happens when you get northern blocking uh, this time of year, when you get high pressure setting up over here, uh, over here, you tend to get low pressure developing underneath it with the jet stream. So this is turning into a cooler and wetter pattern as we move into the second week of uh, of May. And as far as we can go today with the GFS, it's the first first day, the fourteenth of May, and we're looking very unsettled there with low pressure down to the southwest of Ireland, throwing up bands of rain. And uh, that just looks really unsettled as we get to the end of this GFS run. GM looks like that. So, again, low pressure dominates weather on uh, Friday into the weekend. We try to turn the wind into the south and pull up some warmer air from the south. However, the GF GM isn't really interested in pulling up any warmth from the south. It just runs this area of low pressure in, and any warmth that is trying to come up from the south is sort of shunted over to the eastern side of Europe. So, that just keeps things cool and unsettled, really, through to the early part of next week. And then further low pressure just continuing to uh, sit close to the country, albeit rather shallow areas of low pressure. But um, it looks really unsettled still with the GM as we get to day 10, which is, of course, Friday the 8th May, which, as I said, at the of the year, that's going to be uh, Bank Holiday Friday. And we'll have a look about it in detail tonight. Uh, ECM, again, so low pressure dominates on Friday, brings further showers, if not some longer spells. May. may have a slight dry day, actually. On Friday into the weekend, things perhaps dry out a little bit over weekend as we start to generate this slight transient ridge of high pressure. But by Monday, we're actually bringing low pressure back in from off the Atlantic, so probably turning showery over next week. However, as we go to the middle of next week, the ECM is making more of this ridge. So the ECM is a little bit different to the GFS and particularly to the GEM. It's nowhere near as unsettled. And actually, it is starting to generate a ridge of high pressure just to our east. It's starting to pull up some very warm air from the south and from the southeast too. That's Thursday, the 7th of May. Looking really potentially quite warm here with high pressure sitting just to our east. Low pressure is out to west. So that's the upper air temperatures. They do look pretty warm. That's probably enough to get the, upper, the, the service temperatures, I should say, into the low to mid-20 Celsius potentially. Uh, so quite warm there as we go into the middle of next week. Bit different to what the other two models were showing. Uh, but I'm going to get through to day 10 with the ECM, which is Friday 8th of May. 
Again, we tried to move his high pressure up towards Green and Iceland, but it is still keeping the wind kind of like from the south to south east. So this implies that it's not as unsettled next week. This implies it turns increasingly warm, potentially very warm by the end of next week. Uh, 10 Celsius ice burn is pushing through southeast. I think that is enough to get temperature to the mid 20s Celsius. Um, so potentially a little bit on the hot side, actually, by the end of next week with uh, the ECM. Again, low pressure is out to the southwest, so there might be showers starting to be generated at this point. I expect if we could roll on another day, we would probably find things breaking down and turning um, maybe even a little bit thundery. But uh, definitely the ECM is, uh, is really quite warm uh, again uh, today with its operational run. Uh, so this is a precipitation type forecast based on that uh, ECM run from tobetshow.com. Quite a bit of rain across England and Wales today. Big change on what we've had through most of this April. That rain sort of fizzles out later this afternoon into this evening. Tomorrow we do a row again as another band of rain comes in, this time from off the Atlantic. There's actually two bands of rain uh, with that one. So we bring one through light through the um, morning into the afternoon across Ireland, England and Wales. Doesn't get to Scotland. Uh, then we have a drier stop for another one packs into the southwest and that one spreads north as these was overnight uh wednesday into thursday thursday we're left with lots of heavy showers again they're particularly focused on england and wales they may even be a little bit thundering uh friday again sunshine and shower not quite as many showers on friday but uh, even so some quite heavy showers breaking out could again be a little bit on the thundery side. We're into Saturday now and we've got fewer showers on Saturday. So our next sort of um sort of dryish day, really, particularly for England and Wales, is Saturday. Uh, then into Sunday, we've got showery rain into the north and west, so that could be quite heavy. Drier in the southeast, though. So we may get a dry weekend actually in the southeast. Rain is further north and west. And um, that takes through to the start of next week. Um, we know that next week the ECM is keen to start building in some higher pressure to the east. There it's sitting in the North Sea, uh, look over towards Denmark. So it's turning drier through next week. And winds are shifting into the south, southeast. Uh, and that brings up much warmer air from the south. And we just generally go quite dry then as we move up towards day 10. By the time we get through to the 8th of uh, May, as far as we can go, just a few sort of indications of showers beginning to break out in the south southwest. It could start to turn a bit uh, thundering. Bear in mind the GFS and particularly the GM is a lot cooler and a lot more unsettled for next week compared to the ECM. These options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 gets us to the 8th of May. Have 15 members of the ECM ensembles with a ridge sort of to our north and northeast. There's probably a trough through here. Uh, so that could be a little bit more unsettled than it might at first appear. 10 with high pressure to our south, low pressure to the north. That's bringing most unsettled weather into northern parts of the country. 10 with high pressure out, or another 10 with high pressure out to west of Scotland, bringing winds from the east. Uh, we've also got 9 just here with low pressure sitting over the top of the country, bringing down quite cool northern winds. And then 7 including the operational run. So if the operational run not all that well supported by its ensemble today, that hot uh, or very warm uh, operational ECM run, not all that well supported by its ensemble, but it does have the control run with it. Interestingly, that has the ridge over to the east of the country. And of course, we're bringing up those winds from a south south east direction. There's a lot of options on the table there as we get to day 10. And the operational ECM run is not all that well supported. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 13th of May. 13 just here, looking really unsettled. Low pressure over the top of the country. Another 13 with a ridge over the top of the country. So, um, completely different options there between those two 13 uh, members. Um, on, either, on either option. Another 13 again, trough of low pressure over the top of the country. Eight with high pressure out to the west, low pressure to the east. Winds are kind of normally with that one. And then four with uh, high pressure towards Scandinavia, low pressure to our south. They're bringing winds from an east southeast direction. Uh, it looks like it's very, very uncertain picture as we're moving, uh, even at day 10, very uncertain. Beyond that, uncertainty, I think, is just growing. Uh, now, I said we can't show the uh, 7th V2 weekly, unfortunately, today, because they've not updated 
Uh, we've not been updated by NOAA and CPC and NCB. So you're going to show Beijing Climate Centre instead. These are 500 millibar heights, so they're breaking down into 10 APs. So the first 10 APs will take us from the 1st to the 10th of May. The coming week looks unsettled, or the coming 10 days looks unsettled with low pressure in from off the Atlantic, bringing showers, longer spells of rain, and probably quite cool as well. Uh, the next 10-day period is the 11th to the 20th of May with high pressure to our south, low pressure to the north. That looks like it should be a drier and warmer interlude uh, there around the middle part of May. Next 10 day period, if anything, goes back to more unsettled conditions again with a shallow trough of low pressure setting up over to the north country. High pressure down towards Spain, winds in from the west, so that's going to be rather cool and showery. And then the final 10 AP takes us from the 31st of May to the 9th of June. And uh, we have a ridge of high pressure vents sitting just to our north and west. That is setting us down. Could be a bit on the cool side. Wind's probably coming in right from the north to northeast. But at least with high pressure building, it uh, should be settling things down. And um, hopefully giving us a dry start to June. Well, we'll worry about that when we get closer to the time frame because we've got so much uncertainty coming up through the next uh, through the next week to ten days that um, I don't think we worry about anything beyond that. So it certainly could be unsettled for the rest of this week into the weekend. Probably getting a bit dry down in the south southeast. Still some rain in the northwest next week. Uh, and you've seen the evidence. We have got uh, uh, we have got the ECM looking increasingly warm possibly even quite hot for the south uh and relatively dry uh conditions developing next week we've got the gm which is very cool and unsettled for next week and then we've got the gfs somewhere in between in between generally a little bit on the unsettled side with the gfs but not as unsettled as uh, as what the um GM is showing. So, all options on the table, really, uh, for next week, and it's all to play for in terms of what weather's going to be doing for that uh, bank holiday on Friday the 8th of May. And talking of that, that's going to be the next video up tonight. We're going to have a look at that in detail. Uh, Friday 8th of May, our next bank holiday. Uh, so, yeah, we're looking back this evening, probably around 7 o'clock. Uh, right, that's it for today's video. Tomorrow, we've got five-day forecast coming up. We'll have a week's 10-day uh, video update, as always, with regular features. And we're going to be a live stream tomorrow as well, between 4 and 5 o'clock on the YouTube channel. We'll get together and see how we're all doing as we continue to be stuck in lockdown. So, uh, live stream tomorrow. That's all for now, though, uh, and thanks for watching.